Hello, hello, dear Cancer. Welcome to Divine Debut. This is Kathy speaking. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your support all year. This is your reading from the 21st of December until the 31st. Um, as a lot of you may know, I have moved from the Southern Hemisphere to the Northern Hemisphere, which is a big move. So therefore, um, that's why these readings are done towards the end of the month. Mid-month, it was just impossible to get them up. So I do hope that you're all doing well. We are in um, eclipse season right now. And it's a very, very important time for you. We've got a new moon solar eclipse in Capricorn, which is happening in your partnership house on the 25th or 26th of December. Now it is the solstice today is actually the 21st of December. So very important times, a solstice. First day with the sun go, moving into your seventh house. A lot is going to be illuminated for you. And new moons are all about new beginnings. So it is a time to make your wishes, send your intentions to the divine. And let's see what they bring you. Okay. There's a lot of Capricorn. There's so much going on in your, in your partnership house right now, dear Cancer. It is a vital time for you. And when we say partnerships, it doesn't only mean romance. We could be talking about business, other people in general, any relationships. So let's look at your Celtic cross and see what's happening for you. Now there's going to be an eclipse, another eclipse on the 10th of January, which will be in your sign. So it's, you know, you've got to mark these dates in, in the book of your life. It's a very, very important time for you. And I'm happy to be doing your reading Dear Spirit for Cancer, oh, Cancer, yeah, on the uh, solstice on the 21st of December and for the rest of the year and the rest of the decade because we are moving into 2020 <laughs> in a few days. So it's a very important time. Let's take the now position for you, dear Cancer. And we've got the Queen of Cups. So this could be you, of course. But this could also be another water sign. So Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. Let's see what the challenge is. Eight of Wands. So the challenge is to move, to send out those messages, to fly through the air, travel to a distant place, send those messages of love. Okay, there's a lot of emotion. Is there um, emotion? Let's say cups are always very... Um, they're not action orientated, it's more inward. Okay, so receptive. Whereas the challenge is to actually take, you know, make that move, send out those messages. <laughs> and it's funny that in this uh, deck we've got the uh, bow and arrow, which does remind me of Sagittarius. So this could be, you could be dealing with a Sag. I do feel that uh, for most of you, this is your energy. Let's look at your foundation. And you've got the chariot. So there is movement here. A lot of you could be overcoming obstacles. It's a major arcana. It's the card of cancer. That's where the north node is. North node is our trajectory, our fate. It's our destiny. Now, it's good to have a healthy balance of Capricorn and cancer. Capricorn is hosting the south node. So... The south node is, of the moon is where we're coming from. It's something that's very familiar from another incarnation. The north node being in the house of Cancer says that this incarnation, we're supposed to be moving towards Cancerian matters, which are home, family, security, stability, um, of course, feeling comfortable, feeling safe. That's what Cancerian people need in their life. They need that nurturing motherly figure. They need to feel secure. Okay, with the chariot, now this can mean metaphorical or literal movement, but it can also mean just overcoming obstacles where your home is concerned. And this, some of you may have moved home in the past, in the distant past, because that's what uh, 
the chariot can also signify. But it also says that, and I do feel because Cancer is a water sign and very receptive, the challenge being fire and aggressive, like taking action, activation. Um, the universe has put you in the driver's seat. That's why the challenge is fire. So, um, of course, if you're familiar with your birth chart, you know how much of the air element, water element, fire element, and earth element is in your chart. A healthy balance of each and every one of those elements is a balance. Here, we need more fire. That's what I see. So let's see what's in the recent past. We've got the Queen of Pentacles. Queen of Pentacles is a Taurus Virgo Capricorn. It's an earth sign. Some of you may have strong earth in your chart. Others of you may be dealing with another earth sign. Okay, when I mention the sign, please take into consideration that it could be sun, moon, rising, Venus if you're female, and if you're male, then uh, Mars. That's how I see it. Let's take your crowning card, and we've got the Three of Swords, so this is what's on your mind. Okay, some sort of a heartbreak, some sort of a disappointment. This is what you're thinking. Now, this could be a disappointment around your career, your work. Um, some of you may have had some sort of a disappointment, a heartbreak around, um, again, this is the area of your social status. And Capricorn can be really tough. It can be quite challenging. Okay, Capricorn is the elder, it's the wiser, it's the lessons that we learn. So some of you may have had to actually grow up sooner than what uh, was necessary, sooner than what you wanted or could. Uh, and that's where this is a bit of difficult energies. Let's see what else we've got. In the near future, we've got the star card, which is Aquarius. And the star card, of course, is, you know, reaching for the stars, a wish fulfillment. It is the future as well. In the position of you, we've got the high priestess. And the high priestess can speak of strong intuition. This is the Virgo Piscean axis. It's very spiritual. The position of you says that you are, at this time, you may be holding on to secrets. You may have a knowing that you're not sharing with others. You are very intuitive dear cancer but this as i said it's virgo pisces so that's why i think that the queen of pentacles could be a virgo that is in the picture here let's see what is in your found um your environment sorry your environment we've got the fool which is a brand new journey a brand new cycle this is aries aries is the warrior it's the fighter it's the energy the fool the fool is the beginning of something that you want to take a risk on. Now you could be dealing with someone that is someone that is on a new journey, someone else who may have strong Aries in their chart, doesn't have to be, but someone that could also have felt as though they've been taken for a ride, they've been seen as a fool, they've been um, manipulated, um, taken advantage of, who knows. We'll see. Let's take more cards. Your hopes and fears is the hanging man. Again, we've got Pisces. Okay, hopes and fears. Pisces. Pisces is unconditional love. It's ruled by Neptune. Pisces can also be hoping for an ending. Pisces is the 12th house in the natural zodiac. It's also a very hidden house, and therefore it's got a lot to do with hidden matters. It's something that we can't see. So we've got Pisces Aries here. You may be dealing with someone or these, this could even be your energy. You may have something uh, on the cusp with Pisces Aries. Now I'd like to say that obviously we've got Chiron. Chiron, the wounded healer, is very close to the cusp. Um, this is an open wound. This is uh, your the victim mentality, childhood wounds coming to the surface. Um, anything to do with, uh, of course, the parents, where there, where there are childhood wounds. It's got to do usually with the parents, with an imbalance at home. 
So it's it's really funny that we've got opposing energies here. We've got one of Pisces, which is all about sacrifice and giving to the point of no return. And here we've got Aries, which is I am, which is all about thou, thyself. So that's really interesting here. Let's take another card and see what your outcome is. And we've got the Eight of Pentacles. And the Eight of Pentacles, again, can speak of Virgo energy. It's the Virgo card. This is putting your head down, working hard, putting an effort into what you are manifesting. And this could be on any level. So uh, being very busy, working on something very skillfully, something that you may want to start your own business you know the full card is the beginning. It is Aries, which is all about fire, action. It's um, doing, obviously, it's, it's driven. Aries is very driven. It's ruled by Mars. Let's see what's at the bottom of the deck. And we've got the Wheel of Fortune, which is very common in these readings. And this is Jupiter. Sagittarian ruled Jupiter. Now this is a 10, it's the karmic wheel of fate, okay, Jupiter has just moved into your seventh house of partnership and relationship, so any partnerships, any relationships will be uh, on the forefront, will be very important for you, but uh, it may be challenging and then again there's luck as well. So I see Capricorn being an earth sign, it's... Uh, physical and tangible. It's having put in the work to receive uh, the accolades, to receive the rewards for your hard work. Now having Jupiter there um, in Capricorn, and Capricorn is the law as is Sagittarius, Jupiter is very benefic, it's very very positive, very happy-go-lucky energy. Now moving into Capricorn it is a little bit more serious its happiness and its uh, jovialty is a little bit more faded, it's more dimmed, but nevertheless it still expands and brings positivity, nevertheless. All the difference is, is that Capricorn asks for the work before we can receive the abundance that Jupiter uh, can also expand on. So Jupiter expanding on all those energies, which is Pluto, Saturn, the south node of the moon, um, Venus has just moved into Aquarius, so Mercury in the next couple of days, if I'm not mistaken, will be moving into Capricorn as well, so there's so much going there, Mercury is obviously all about communication, the Wheel of Fortune again, Jupiter brings expansion and growth, it can also bring though, it can bring legalities, anything to do with the law, let's see what's beneath this is a cycle ending nevertheless and we've got the nine of pentacles again nine of pentacles can speak of virgo nine of pentacles is one pentacle before the ten before the family the stability the support from family the family money the family business ten of pentacles is also the marriage card so this individual here has got everything that her heart desires she just doesn't have the partner to share it with she doesn't have her other half obviously she's been she's had her head down work 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 and security and that was very important but now with everything going on in your seventh house obviously things are going to be happening where partnerships relationships and love are concerned for you dear cancer let's see what's beneath the nine nine of pentacles and we've got the five of swords Five of Swords is uh, fighting a battle that's uh, that's very, very conflictual. It's very harsh because swords can be very cutting. They can be uh, an intellectual fight, uh, a fight of intelligence. It can be also uh, difficult words, terrible adjectives being thrown left, right and centre. So it can be like three people there's three people here though so it's not a it's not a balance it's an imbalance threes are never equal so therefore here we've got an air 
air energy and we've got the three of swords here too so there's been some sort of a disappointment we've got threes and threes here we've also got two feminine energies here so I'm wondering what that is all about dear cancer now for those of you that are single I do see two two um, two feminine uh, individuals here the Queen of Pentacles doesn't I suppose doesn't have to be a feminine it could be an earth sign same as the Queen of Cups even though I felt for some of you that this is your energy for others of you this could be two uh, different individuals that you're dealing with now maybe for some of you because we do have uh, water and earth here I did say here we've got earth and water so Pisces and Virgo so again it's a general reading so please don't get stuck on the signs I mentioned them if they relate to you good if not look at the bigger picture now here we've also got Aquarius we've got Cancer Aries um, now Cancer is cardinal energy so is Aries we've got cardinal energy we've got fixed energy we've got mutable energy so the only uh, we do have fixed, mutable, and cardinal, yeah. So we've got every a little mix of everything here. Let's take more cards. I want to see what this um, this disappointment is. Three of Swords always can be a love triangle. It can be a heartbreak. It can be a disappointment. It can be a lot of things. Let's look at your love life first of all, dear Cancer, and see what's going on. Now, in the near future here, I do see with the star it's a wish fulfillment the star can also be social media wow two cards just turned over and wow okay calling in your soulmate and playfulness your prayers affirmations and visualizations help bring you together now this is Archangel Michael and I will keep these cards to recapture romance allow your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine so there is a lot of playfulness but there's also the um, a great deal of importance in a connection like that okay so I'm going to put them down here calling in your soulmate looks like with a wheel of fortune this could be turning in your favor what I see what I see with Archangel Michael is um, I know that when we call upon him he he will show some sort of a sign I was lucky enough to have him um, visit me um, and I it was quite a scary experience because I didn't know it was him until I realized it after and ever since then he's been my spirit guide and that's why I feel if if it wasn't Archangel Michael if it was another card I would have said I will keep uh, shuffling but the fact that it's my favorite card it is my number one card in this deck I will keep it I do trust that that is the message for you now I'd like to see with the astrology what's going on here now also about playfulness it does ring Leo the house of Leo is the house of fun is the house of children Now we do have some wands here can be Sagittarian we do have the bow and arrow as I said we've got Aries it'll be interesting to see what else comes out we've got the Wheel of Fortune which is Sagittarius of course now please spirit for cancer how are they affected energetically what do they need to know And we have fifth house and creativity which is the house of Leo so I'm not surprised at all it's a 29 which equals 11 creativity fifth house matters this can be concerning children this can be concerning um, again creativity anything that you are beginning business wise now Leo can be very generous Leo is your second house of values it's also 
Leo being ruled by the sun and again fixed energy with Leo uh, fixed energy is persistent so I'd like to say that for those of you that are creating something of your own something that is of value for you um, I'd like to say that with this card here obviously you've got the potential taking that risk it is the house of risk taking that risk and going for what you desire what your heart tells you 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 desire what you want what you yearn for I do believe that that will bring you in it will bring in the tangible results which is money obviously will bring you abundance and again don't forget the second house is also the house of comforts okay so So now we've got Leo and Aquarius on the same axis. Again, fixed energy, fixed energy. Now, let's see. We've got an 11 here. 11 is very karmic. It's like a new portal. That's what I always see with number 11. I'm going to be taking more cards. Let's go for more cards. How many majors have we, have we here? One, two, three four, five, six major arcana cards. Dear Cancer, this is important. This is important. So the Queen of Cups is someone who's very open-hearted, someone who is willing to offer their cup of love. They're willing to be open to love. For some of you, this could be a same-sex uh, relationship. We do have two feminine energies here. One is more heartfelt, open-hearted, and the other one is more business orientated, but very dependable and very stable. Okay. Let's take the Queen of Cups. For many of you, I do believe that this could be your energy. You are ready with your heart open. The challenge is to take the action on it. Send out those messages. Don't feel, don't just feel, but take action. Um Don't hold on to it. Let it go. Send it where it's supposed to go. Now, I know that you may have been through some sort of a disappointment, but as I said, Leo is all about risk-taking, fun, playfulness, right? Just like the Romance Angel says, take that risk. We've got the Death card, which is another fixed sign. The Death card is Scorpio and Scorpio is all about intimacy, relationships, committed relationships, sharing on a very deep level. There is some sort of a change here now. You may have strong Scorpio in your chart. For others of you, if this is not your energy, then this would be a Scorpio. Scorpio or a, we've got all the water signs here. I'm gonna say Scorpio because Scorpio is sitting right on top of that Queen of Cups. Let's see what the challenge is. What is the challenge? The challenge is the Three of Swords. We do have the Three of Swords. Someone's been disappointed. Maybe some of you were hoping to actually travel on these holidays at this holiday period, hoping to take a flight, travel, but for whatever reason you weren't able to Maybe there, were too, there was too much going on at home. Let's see, let's see. Again, this could be a love triangle. Three of Swords. Nevertheless, there is a transformation that is needing to happen here. Let's take a look at the chariot. And we've got the star again. Double up on the star, doubling up on the star. And this is the theme. We've got a lot of double cards coming through. Now, at once, hmm, what I feel here is that it's been a wish uh, that you've been wanting to accomplish, to materialize, to realize, to move. Some of you may have wanted to move to a distant place. Yes, you may have wanted to uh, travel the world, maybe move and settle somewhere else but for whatever reason let's 
Let's look at this Queen of Pentacles. She is holding that Ace of Pentacles, which means she's very stability. St wow, she's very stable. We've got the Queen of Cups, so that's very interesting. Queen of Cups and the Queen of Pentacles are more than likely the same person for most of you. Now, this could mean here that there is some sort of a change and a transformation. Um, some sort of a di disappointment and change needs to happen. That's why the challenge is the movement. Now, this could be your energy, this could be your partner, it doesn't really matter. We're looking at the story. And as I said before, here we've got, um, we've got, because with the Queen of Cups, that could be Piscean energy. Doesn't necessarily have to be Cancer. Here we've got Virgo and Pisces. So this Queen of Pentacles, whoever this is, Queen of Pentacles and Queen of Cups, as I said, same person. They're very intuitive. Now this could be someone that's quite psychic, someone who works with the occult, works with the unknown, the hidden realms. This could be a psychic. This could be someone who does tarot. Could be someone who deals with astrology. So let's take let's take more cards. Let's look at this three of swords and two of swords. So needing to make a decision, two and three of swords, that's five swords. Needing to make a decision but not having all the information, all the clues. Maybe someone can't make a decision because they were, maybe you were disappointed, maybe you were disappointed in the past. Maybe you've come out of heartbreak and therefore decisions take a bit longer for you. Let's take another card. A Nine of Swords, a lot. Now this could be a lot of worry around work. This could be around career. This could be around the law, some disappointments, some something to do with the law, with government agencies. For others of you that this is in love and your social status, you may have been disappointed. You, you know, whatever you were dealing with in the past may have not been cut out to what you thought it would be. So five and nine is 14. Some of you are healing, but this is still on your mind. You may be healing from a broken heart from the past. Let's take, and I want to say that Capricorn, which would be in this area here, and uh, Saturn, Saturn ruling Capricorn. Saturn is very slow moving and it takes forever. So it's the elder. So I would say that this heartbreak uh, holds, is here a long time, from a long time ago, I feel. It goes back. It goes back for quite some time, I feel. Now, it's, we've got five and nine is 14. That's a temperance. Temperance card can mean foreign places and people, higher education. It can mean spirituality. Again, the truth, the law, the guru, the teacher. Um, again, Sagittarius is the law. As well it's all about the truth mm. and temperance speaks of healing some of you are on the way to healing but you're still 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 looking still fearing the worst whatever decision you're on the fence about and if this is a decision that someone else has got to make, then you're worried sick about it. Let's take another card on that. And we've got three, three of pentacles. So yes, it could be in relation to work, collaborations with others, or it could be three people in a situation, a love triangle. So yeah. Now, with the three of pentacles looking at it as success and expansion where work is concerned, you could be overcoming any disappointments of the past where here you're starting to be, you're at the level of 
uh, success, but the initial success. Okay. Let's look at this. I want to look at the Three of Swords as the challenge position on top of the Eight of Wands. Oh, wow. Wow. Cancer. This is the end. This is the end. It's You've got the Nine and you've got the Ten. And the Ten breaks down to the Ace. You've been heartbroken. You've been backstabbed. You feel as though you've been deceived. But the sun is actually starting to show itself. This is as dark as it gets. It doesn't get any darker. Things are going to start to pick up. The challenge is the Eight of Wands. And the Eight of Wands is quick energy. This could mean quick healing through truth. And again, we've got here, we've got 13 swords, which is the number of the death, death card. So something to do with money from external sources, uh, commitment, a sexuality, intimacy, as well as truth. Somewhere there, Sagittarius Scorpio area, we're looking at. Now, of course, for each and every one of you, it will be a different scenario. So if we say that the Ten of Swords turns into the Ace, then that's four swords. So you're taking a break. You're the warrior who's taken a breather. You're meditating. You're gathering yourself up, your thoughts, your perception, and healing in the process. Having gone through some sort of a transformation and a change, now not everyone will be going through this at the same pace, at the same level and at the same time. Let's look at the star. We do have a wish fulfillment card here. Something could be at a distance. Again, you're following your shining star. Let's see, you've got the energy of Aquarius twice. Now, Venus is in the sign of Aquarius, and Venus is love, money, projects. It can also speak of uh, detaching where love is concerned, being, um, being able to detach or to get away from something that may have been um, quite demanding. Whilst Venus was moving through Capricorn, moving over Saturn and Pluto, it hasn't been easy. Let's see. The star. And we've got the devil, Capricorn. So we've got Aquarius and Capricorn. Both signs are ruled by Saturn. This is no doubt Saturnian energies here. Now, not the devil is not only an, a nasty energy, even though when we've got Ten of Swords, yes, it can be very perplexing. It can be really addictive and magnetic and hard to escape from this energy. Now, the fear of the devil, it's more the fear of what it is in reality. It's the fear of the unknown. But also the devil can also bring which is Saturn, it can bring your wish fulfillment once the work and the effort has been um, done. So we've got Capricorn and Aquarius, cusp. Capricorn, Aquarius. Now Capricorn is the career house, Aquarius is the money coming through from career. So that's what Saturn could be bringing you here. You've put in the effort, you've, um, you've done the work, you've done the, jo the job here. Now, the devil can also mean strong attraction, strong magnetic attraction. Now, the devil can also be someone who is difficult. It could be a difficult boss. Uh, some of you may have been hoping could have been hoping for some sort of a promotion and there's the, the door that's closed but the star promises that your wish will be fulfilled. It's asking you for a bit more effort, 
we're getting into that. We're coming into this time. Remember what I said, all the energies are in Capricorn. In the near future, you've got a wish fulfillment and this is your partnership house. Let's look at the High Priestess. In the position of you. And we've got the World card. So keep the faith that whatever cycle you're trying to complete, and this is wonderful, we've got the full card here, we've got the world card here, which is the four fixed energies. Okay, Venus is ready to be born. She is freed. Now she is feeling very free and very mm, detached in Aquarius. So therefore she is able to we've got very opposing energies with Capricorn and Aquarius. Capricorn is the chains and Aquarius is freedom. Okay, it's doing things in a different way. I'm free to act and to react in the way that I want to. I don't have to answer to anyone as long as I'm in the right and I'm doing the right thing, says Saturn, then the door opens. So this is a successful completion of a cycle, of a karmic cycle, but we've also got um world travel here okay always with the world card we see it as travel now this could mean in the near future in the near future that you'll be able to overcome whatever obligations and restrictions you've had and whatever disappointments maybe career can affect your love life let's say whatever the case and this could be of course this could be distance you could be spiritually connecting with someone that is spiritually and physically like uh, communi through communication through social media but there could also be a spiritual connection here as well let's look at the full And we've got the Seven of Cups, very common card in these readings. A lot of Piscean energy. Pisces can mean endings, no doubt. But, you know, someone is ready to take a, a leap of faith here, but they feel as though they don't have the full clarity. Now, the Fool, of course, takes the risk, so, as is uh, the Fifth House Matters. Maybe this is saying that you, the new cycle... This new cycle is going to be giving you a lot of choices. You're going to have a lot of choices through beginning something brand new and taking that risk. The divine, which is a number seven, is giving you choices. Let's see. If we put the two cards together, we've got the Ten of Cups. So this is happiness. This is a lot of happiness, this celebration. Again, three, another three, three of cups. Um, this new beginning is going to open a lot of doors for you, dear Cancer. That is wonderful. Let's, I feel that the hanging man is a fear. You've already, you've already sacrificed so much. It's actually time to take on the energy of Aries now. I am. I am the warrior and I'm starting this new cycle in my life because I feel the calling. I'm done with the past. This cycle has ended. Okay, let's look at this. And we've got six of pentacles, which is reciprocity, giving and receiving, equal giving and taking. No more sacrifice from one side, one-sided sacrifices. This is equilibrium and this is Libra, which is the natural house of partnerships. This is democracy. This is um, harmony. Now, this could also be legality. Some of you may have been waiting for a payout. Alimony, child support could be anything like that. Some others of you may have had the necessity for funds um, a partnership, a third person entering. Maybe there was the necessity for more funds within a business and that's where the 
uh, heartbreaks. Some of you may have tried to go for a loan um, to bring in more money if this is a business, but maybe that's where the disappointments were, that you could not, the doors were closed for you. Let's look at that Eight of Pentacles. I'm going to take the Eight of Pentacles and the Wheel of Fortune. Eight of Pentacles. And we've got Temperance, which I've already mentioned a few times. This is Sagittarius. This is uh, something obviously from Spirit. The angels are here. The angels are here and they're bringing you healing. They're bringing you a a wish fulfillment they're bringing you healing they're bringing you something that they are preparing on your behalf and again we've got Scorpio we've got Sagittarius and we've got Capricorn it's all the top of the chart there um, and you know the top of the chart has got a lot to do with uh, with others it's not so personal dear cancer which is the bottom of the chart so this is dealing with others, no doubt. Now temperance again says temper yourself. Things take time. The angels are preparing. They're looking for the best possible outcome for all the parties involved. Let's take the will of fortune. Jupiter is working his magic, no doubt, in the sign of Capricorn. Let's take a card and we've got the Ace of Cups. Dear Cancer, that's what Jupiter, Uncle Jupiter is bringing you a brand new beginning where love is concerned. Something is going to start. You're going to have the happiness and the optimism of knowing that this is a love that's sent to you from the divine. This is very spiritual. And I did speak of spirit. Even um, the Wheel of Fortune, Sagittarius, is very spiritual. A lot of you have been praying for this. It's finally happening. The end of burdens and the beginning of a brand new cycle, which is brought to you by the angels, by spirit. And what it's saying is that there's been too much, a lot of severity here and a lot of growth, obviously. What, what the reading is saying here is that it's time to have fun be a little bit more creative you know it's time to be that child to have fun here we've got calling your soulmate calling in your soulmate and of course well I mean this is incredible here is Archangel Michael in both cards thank you Archangel Michael for your clarity for the clarity what I'd like to do is, and uh, they, your, you know, spirit knows that you've been through what you've been through. It's time to uh, to cover those wounds, not cover, but heal. Chiron is the open wound. It is, as I said, close to the cusp of Aries Pisces, and Aries Pisces are endings and beginnings. That is the theme of these uh, these readings for the last ten days of this decade. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to take just a couple of cards more. Queen of Pentacles, Queen of Cups. Queen of Swords, wow. Three queens here. This is amazing. This is literally amazing. Look at that. Now, for a lot of you, there's a, a, quite a few females in your life, feminine, energies here we've got a water sign an air sign and an earth sign um, now the queen of swords could be this could be a legal representative this could even be um, the queen of pentacles of course in another light if this is virgo virgo does show up many times as the queen of swords she's very virgo is very logical mercury ruled now the queen of cups is the intuition so again, these could be three sides to this queen. It's funny that we've uh, we've got all the queens except for the queen of wands. What I'd like to do is, and I'm going to say that this queen of pentacles 
is probably following her intuition. She's cutting out what does not work for her. That's obvious here. And this could be a judge, a magistrate. Let's take another look at this Queen of Cups with the card of death. And we've got the Ten of Pentacles. So there is a change within a family situation, a change within a marriage. There is a transformation where um, finances and family are concerned. You know that obviously the Ten of Pentacles says that this situation got to the full culmination. Whatever this means, the Ten of Pentacles, it does turn into the Ace, which is the Ace of Pentacles that the Queen of Pentacles is holding. Now, again, I'm going to say we could be talking about, we could be talking about um, two sisters or three sisters and a mother here, a family situation where there's been backstabbing and an imbalance. But whatever the imbalance was and the backstabbing, it's time to face the music here with the devil. That's what I feel. We do have three of cups here and I do see this as three siblings as well. I'd like to take one more card on the devil and the star card. And we've got the Nine of Cups, another wish fulfillment. So it looks as though, yes, it is time to face the music. That is if you haven't stood in your integrity, you haven't been good. Just like Santa says, have you been good? That's what Uncle Saturn says as well. We do have two cards of wish fulfillment, which to me says that, dear Cancer, you've done, you've been there, you've done your obligations. It's time for you to celebrate. For those that have stabbed you in the back, it's time for them to save the music. And you know that the Nine of Cups can also speak of escapism as well. Too much alcohol, too much medicine, binging, anything to feel the escapism. That's Neptunian, okay, to, um, to help get through these difficult energies because if the devil is quite challenging. Let's take one more card on the temperance here, the temperance and the eight of pentacles. So what are the angels bringing you after you've worked so hard, dear Cancer, and they've got a successful new beginning for you, another ace. This is beautiful. Okay, successful new beginning. This is um, the truth. You're standing in your truth. There is royalty here. We do have the crown on top of that Ace of Swords, which means that there is no ego here where the angels and spirit is concerned. This is like being grounded. The Eight of Pentacles is a grounding energy. So I'm going to say that some of you probably have got strong earth in your chart as well. I do feel that. So you've got, wow. You've got something like three wish cards. You've got two aces. This is such a reading. And, of course, you've got calling in your soulmate. What I'd like to do is take some Sabilas. Let's take some Sabilas and... Uh, I'd like to look at the crowning uh, position first of all, up here. We have Vecchia Signora, which is the Two of Swords. You've got the Two of Swords twice here. Now, the Vecchia Signora can be an elderly person, an elderly female, a grandmother, a mother, could also be, but it's called the visitor. So, there is a vis someone is paying you a visit here. And this could be someone that's elder and wiser that you could be getting the advice from and help to make the decision. Here we've got Il Namiko, which is number 11. Very karmic. This is the difficult energy, which is moving away. 
the transformation is coming in. And here we've got the artista. So the uh, cloud, the illusion has been broken here because the information has been uh, found, the discovery has been made. Now this could also mean someone who was, uh, who had illusions about some sort of a situation and this is that bubble being burst. Now this could also be a solicitor that helps you, that helps guide you through whatever disappointment this is, if this was business. So this could have been, you may have been deceived through business and have suffered losses where money is concerned. And it's funny that the artista does remind me very much of the Aquarian energy. Now Aquarius is the genius. Aquarius is ruled by Uranus. Uranus is the right brain. That's ingenious. Ingen an ingenious brain. So who is this very intelligent person which helps you uh, make the discovery? Is this a solicitor or is this you and your discovery? Let's look at the now position. So we've got Queen of Cups, Eight of Wands, the Death card, Ten of Pentacles, which turns into the Ace of Pentacles. So you've got a another ace, let's say, here, as well as the Three of Swords and the Ten of Swords. We've got Leggerezza, that's beautiful. Transformation, lightness of being, the metamorphosis uh, has happened. You've gotten to the end of the cycle and this is metamorphosis. This is also sexual, um, a sexual indication. We do have the Eight of Wands beneath, which is all about passion and intimacy, right? And we've got the devil here. So we've got the Naro, the Ace of Pentacles. This card keeps showing up in all the readings. This is the Safe. This is the Ace of Pentacles. This is the Six of Cups, which speaks of a soulmate connection, someone from a past lifetime. Uh, it could be a, like a soulmate twin flame connection, but it can also speak of children and trust and innocence this is the card of security and that's what cancer needs but this is also called the advantageous matrimony so the expensive the abundant wedding and here we've got allegres al core which can be there's three people here but this can also speak of merriment and happiness this is the five of cups leaving the past in the past and looking towards the future to a new agreement, a new relationship, an agreement, let's say. Let's take one more. After that, Alegreza al Core. I'd like to take one more. And we've got La Mante, which is 11 again. But this is your knight in shining armor. This is the gentleman the one that will serenade you. This is your knight in shining armor. As I said, it's all about love. It's all about romance. So I do feel very strongly that this leggerezza, which is the transformation, the metamorphosis that the butterfly goes through, hasn't been easy. But it is a ten of wands. And again, ten wands breaks down to the ace. So again, it's got to do with sexuality, yes, but this is the beginning. It's as though you've got the, um, similar to Ace of Wands, Ace of Pentacles here. So I do believe that the metamorphosis, the change here was not easy, but the Ace of Pentacles and the Denaro denotes a lot of security, happiness, abundance, whether it's monetary or whether it's emotional abundance which I love to see for you. Let's take, uh, no, actually, I'm not going to look at the outcome. I'm going to look at the environment and around you with the full card, seven of cups, three of cups, which seven and three do equal 10. We have Amore, which is little Cupid. We've got 
11, another 11, news coming from afar. And we've got La Matrici. Remember how I said we, we don't have the Queen of Wands? Well, here she is. This is her. Now, she's number 12, which is the Hanging Man. So therefore, we're talking about sacrifice having been made. Um, and I think, I do feel here with this energy is that she's going for what she feels passionate here on out. Instead of being in the energy of the hanging man, she is now going for what inspires her, what she desires. And that's what I see here in this card. She's sacrificed enough. You know, if we add that 12, it does equal the three, which can be very, you know, it's the expanding of a situation. It's abundance. Let me take one more card on that. And we've got the Ten of Pentacles, which is the Ladro. Now, this card, I always see it as something missing from a family situation. There is a, an outsider. There is something that may have been taken, stolen, literally stolen from a family situation, from a home. This could also be just negativity with family. So this is the Ten of Pentacles, no doubt, which means marriage, which means abundance. Yes, but there is still a little bit of here, there is still something that is mm, something that is lurking in the background that you still have got to deal with, dear, dear Cancer. So just be careful. Be careful with your belongings. Uh, make sure you secure your home before if you're going away on holiday. Anything like that. All right. All right, dear Cancer, I think I will leave it at that. Otherwise, they get too long. The readings get way too long. So uh, what I do see here is a brand new cycle. Congratulations. Patience for healing to come through. Whatever disappointments you've had, um, it's time to overcome because of Scorpio energy. And the divine is sending you many aces. It's, it's Jupiter is just expanding. It's just perfect, the astrology with the tarot. That's why I love to use both astrology and tarot together. That's why my readings um, incorporate astrology because it gives you a clearer picture. And that's how I deliver my readings, even my personal readings. So if you are interested in one, please don't hesitate to reach out. I will be more than happy to guide you. Thank you so much, dear Cancer. I'd like to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Wishing you all the best for 2020. And please look out for my uh, last videos for the year. And again, thank you so much for your support for the whole year of 2019. Love and light to all of you. Many blessings. Look after yourselves.